the world is moving fast and AI is the catalyst. In September 2024, the OpenAI model O1, or Strawberry, reached IQ of 120, which is more than 91% of all humans on Earth. And it is expected that within two years, by 2027, OpenAI models will reach IQ of 160, which is the Einstein level. For reference, the Elon Musk's IQ is estimated 155. Now, what does it mean? AI will be smarter than any human on Earth. This is so-called artificial superintelligence. So as Sam Altman, the, the founder of uh, OpenAI says, you can just tell to AI now go and discover quantum physics from me. And this is not a science fiction. It's not a science fiction because it's using so-called chain of thought reasoning where uh, AI is breaking any complex, regardless how complex is the problem in small tasks as we human do, but in much more comprehensive in much faster and efficient way. So this will allow us to, uh, to tackle much more complex problems. And the other trend which is expected to bring fruits in 2025 is agentic computers, AI agents, which not just like now, you know, in generative AI, you ask for advice and you give information back, they will do things for you. They will, for example, they can automate emails and they could do much more complex tasks. Uh, you can, for example, say now, build me a material which is as strong as or stronger than carbon, but transparent, quite mind-blowing for humans. Then this agentic AI, and these are multiple engines, like Savannah of agents, like Eric Schmidt from Google calls it, uh, they start analyzing, collecting information, but then go to the lab, start testing, prototyping. So they do things for you and not just reactively, not just advice, they do things and also proactively. So what leaders should do for this artificial superintelligence age, where AI is much smarter than whole humanity, and where this intelligence is available at the fingertip of everyone, from your employees, or maybe even some bad actors. Now, first of all, start exploring AI agents, a computer. And there are simple things to do. You could automate your email, for example, when you kind of filter your emails and put some criteria and there are tools for that, like Zapier, for example. Then you pass this to the large language model. This is what I do, pass it to ChatGPT. To train, you have a special agent or GPT. You, you train it on your response, on your products, on the benefits of your products. And then it drafts your response, you check it. And then again, automatically it is uh, responded. So start exploring agents from email, very basic stuff to kind of redesigning your strategy. You know, AI it could be invaluable in doing market research, exploring the market trends, doing a peer review what your competitors are doing and kind of redesigning, redeveloping or uh, re-adapting uh, your strategy in real time. And when you have to be communicate the strategy to all stakeholders, being investors, employees, partners, and so on, AI can have a personalized communication for that. So start exploring AI agents that do things for you, not just advice. Second is start preparing your data. Data is your new goal. I was recently on a conference when there was almost all speakers said, you know, protect your data. This is your asset. This is your goal. Because if you have a big amount of data and you train large language models, for example, on that or other machine learning models, they can give you insights which will give you competitive advantage. So start getting your data ready. But they have to be clean, which takes time and effort. They have to be organized. They are tools to support you. And you have to ensure that you have a process to update your data. As you collect them, you get them ready for machine learning. Number three is related to risks. Start exploring the risk. As I said, everyone will have access to um, super intelligence, to the brains, collective brains of Aristotle, Einstein, Elon Musk, and every kind of smart person who left a digital footprint on the planet. And this could be used also with bad intentions. You know, for example, AI could analyze all the cyber threats which are available and start writing their own threats. And this is, could be a recursive process. It learns from writing and much faster than any human generates new kind of cyber attacks and so on. So there will be a process 
And it is a balancing act of enabling AI to, uh, to thrive and not regulate it too much so we could bear the innovation, but also the process of putting the guardrails and, and securing it. So for you as a leader, ensure you are managing those risks, you are identifying those risks. And you put a governance to see two things. How can you control the, the bad actors so uh, to, to be able to identify, mitigate? And second, how can you pull the plug, which is a difficult thing, but if it starts being misused, how can you stop it? I think this is much more relevant on a global level, and there is a lot of effort already in this space to regulate and be able to pull the plug, but also on a micro level for your organization, there is something to do. Number four is get ready for disruption. So disruption, not just efficiency and individual productivity, which is happening even now and which is great, but get ready for new business models. New business models, get ready for your customers having changed expectations, digital expectations, and some new players who kind of introduce this new digital business model and disrupt your industry. For example, I had a podcast uh, yesterday with Suzanne Shepard. She used to be a president of Novartis Oncology, and now she's a multiple board member in several uh, pharmaceutical companies. And she gave the example for skin cancer. If you have an app, which you can just photograph your skin, and then machine learning algorithms in the background, it can analyze and it could very early detect if you have any risk of skin cancer. The chances to tackle cancer, if it's detected early, are much higher for all types of cancers. So be ready to expect new business model, be on the pulse of it, and be ready to be kind of digitally ready. And uh, number five is prepare your leadership team to be AI first leadership team. Don't just expect some people from IT department to discover and to teach. Put your hands into the game. Uh, get your hands uh, dirty in a good way. Experiment, explore, and also understand the big picture. There are three pillars like data, process, and people that you need to understand the implications of AI. Data we already covered. Get your data ready and clean and start now because otherwise you will lose competitive advantage. People, you have to be empathic. You need to see the role evolution within your organization. You have multiple roles, and it's not about replacing jobs, but automating tasks. So get ready and prepare uh, like a role evolution for each of the role. Would it be become obsolete? Would it be become augmented, which I bet would be the most of the roles? or it would be um, a new role, which is the hard to predict. So own this role evolution as a leadership team, for sure HR has a key role, and then process. Be ready with this agentic AI. How can you adapt your business processes for AI automation? Which of the tasks could be automated and so on? So understand the big picture. So the bottom line is the future belongs to those leaders who embrace AI. It will become smarter and smarter, much faster than we think. It will be capable to do amazing things, as I said, treat diseases, discover new materials and amazing things. So be ready, embrace it now. This is the way to lead in the age of AI.